Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome to another beautiful Sunday service with us here at the LW UK Zone. Hey, I hope you're having a most fantastic and most wonderful time. And on behalf of our highly esteemed Zone Secretary, Pastor Wilson Grace, I welcome you. Praise the Lord. Welcome to another Sunday service. Ready to read ready for the word of God to renew and transform your life. Glory to God. But before we get started, I'd like to thank my highly esteemed Zono Secretary, Pastor Wilson Grace, for this beautiful, beautiful opportunity to moderate today's service. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But before we get started, let's all stand on our feet and bow our head as we pray and we thank God for this beautiful, beautiful day. As I said, it could be morning, could be afternoon, good, good wherever you are just thank god for the day for the day that you're about to have and the day that you've had and everything that you're about to receive in this service this lovely beautiful service glory to god let's just lower our head oh libra casonte branda caskele broca ante bradesca limande giribosco origes canta bayarade oh precious father lord we thank you we thank you for this beautiful service we thank you for every word every moment every praise and worship everything that we receive in this service it is true of your word it is true of your will and it's true of who you are limante grabagasco ilimandi grabaga a rendico bra escate monda gibra ayaradi rakabasunto kubra ilikas kante bra a rakabasunto kubena de karakasco iliba ragabase te kiriliba o rigas katabande giske alale rakabasco taradis kabaradin deske ili Rakapasoto show brandiska ladika rakatasi arakapasante kiriba regimonti karakasko ili brandi rakabaso kiliba mente kebra a libra kaskele kara rigabasante kibaradu rakalina mandiski iraka kareri rakabasunte kirikeka rakabasha tayarado si kremedi aradi rikabasanta yaradu o rakabashete ske eleba rakaba sete ke aradi rakaba sente kiri alabaru radika sende gibi aradi rikas katara rekeba 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 o mante giba rada do soto kobra ande rikas katele bro o shiske dana mandeski erabaho rakaba sete ske bahadish kandaba rigede ba soto kobra yaradi rakaba sente kibara rika karada di rika Arakaba shente kere ba zukro ore ba yaradi. Orakaba shente ke bi eraha. Iza karada. Iraba soto shobra endeska anandi. Rigadas ke ba ro o mandiska a. Orakadeska. Oh glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Father Lord. We thank you for this beautiful, beautiful platform that you have created for your word to be shared. Yes, this 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 channel is changing lives. The words that are about to receive today, Father, they are receiving they are receiving it with meekness and gladness. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Yes, they are elevated, they are changed. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Glory to God. I hope you are warmed up and you're prepared. But before we get started with our next, you know, before I introduce our most wonderful, most beautiful, most glamorous choir, I want you to go and invite everybody in your household to come and sit down and to watch this service. You know, anybody, even if it's just your neighbor next door, go and knock at the door. Just let them know that service has started. If anything, post it on your social media platform, send it for your, via your WhatsApp, your Instagram, Twitter, wherever, and share the link so that everybody will be having an opportunity and a blessing to join in today's service and receive something the same way you will be receiving you want them to receive as well let's be sharers and sharers of the gospel oh hallelujah but without further ado our most beloved our most wonderful our most excellent blw uk zone a choir
Welcome to today's Sunday service. We hope you have a beautiful time so far. My name is Brother Nick, and I'm going to be taking us through today's Rhapsody of Reality's devotional review. Firstly, I'd like to thank our highly esteemed Zonal Secretary, Pastor Walls, for this opportunity to be taking you guys through today's Rhapsody. And I'd also like to thank my esteemed group pastor, Pastor Onika, as well, for this opportunity to take you through today's Rhapsody. So today is Sunday the 11th, and the article is titled Singers of His Praise. And the scripture opens up. Of world, our open scriptures take from Psalm chapter 105, verse 2, which says, Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works. All the great men or women of God you find in the Bible were singers of the Lord's praise. No wonder they lived an extraordinary, extraordinarily victorious life in every way. It's time for us to learn to praise and sing unto the Lord Most High. We're to sing songs of the Spirit, for we are singers of his praise. Hallelujah. For example, after crossing the Red Sea and witnessing how the Egyptian warlords perished in him, Moses broke out in songs of praise, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for you have triumphed gloriously. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I'll prepare him an habitation. My Father is God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Let's take from Exodus chapter 15, verses 1 to 3. When the Israelites fought against King Jabin and destroyed him, Deborah and Barak sang to the Lord with these beautiful words. Praise ye the Lord for the, for the avenging of Israel. Hear, O ye kings, give ear, O ye princes. I, even I, will sing unto the Lord and sing praise to the glory. Praise the Lord, God of Israel, which is taken from Judges chapter 5, verse 2 to 3. How about Miriam's poetic acknowledgement of Israel's miraculous deliverance from the charging Egyptians? Sing to the Lord, because he has won a glorious victory. He has, sure, he has thrown the horses and their riders into the sea, which is taken from Exodus chapter 15, verse 21 in the Good News Bible. And even over in the New Testament, we read the prophetic utterance about Jesus that says, In the midst of the church, I will sing praise unto thee. And that's referring to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 12. And the prophetic utterance about Jesus declares that he would sing praise to the Lord in the midst of the church among his brethren. And he did. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The night before he was betrayed, after he had served his disciples, the Holy Communion, the Bible says, they sang a hymn and went directly to the Mount Olives, which refers to Matthew chapter 26, verse 30 in the message translation. Then Luke chapter 10, verse 21, he did something beautiful. He sang a song. Songs are spiritual songs. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just let us know the importance of us being singers of his praise. Sing psalms to the Lord. And it's actually a very key part of the life of it, or the, the perpetual victory parade life that we live as Christians. Going from victory to victory. It's very important that we praise the Lord at each and every single point. It's, it's that something that's a, it's a hallmark of many successful people in the Bible. And we too are meant to follow within the footsteps and even within the footsteps of our master Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So right now we're going to take the confession. So if you can repeat after me, we'll take it on the count of three. Three, two, one. Dear Father, I praise your name and worship your majesty. For you're the healer, the supplier of all good things and you're greater than all. Thank you for granting me the grace to prevail always over circumstances. In Jesus' name, amen, hallelujah. So that's today's wraps to review. And as always, we have the further study. And we have three scriptures today, all taken from the book of Psalms. So we have Psalms chapter 150, verses 1 to 6. Psalms chapter 9, verses 11. And Psalms 13, verse 6. Now, I'd like to thank our highly esteemed on the section of this opportunity to take you through today's wraps to And now we're going on to the next segment of the Cycle Campbell. A 53-year-old security officer from the United Kingdom began with symptoms of a loss of balance, coordination, 
and control of his muscles and reflexes. He staggered when he walked, was unable to grasp objects firmly, experienced numbness, tremors, and loss of sensation in his hands and legs. The symptoms became agitated until he was forced to visit the hospital, where he was diagnosed with low blood pressure. Despite the prescriptions he received to alleviate the discomforts he experienced, no permanent solution was provided and the condition declined even further. Then, without warning, on the morning of Thursday the 9th of December 2021, Vika suddenly suffered double cardiac arrest and immediately fell into a state of a coma for eight weeks. Despite having regained consciousness two months later, he unfortunately suffered several impairments, which were the consequences of the damage to his brain. It was in this life-threatening state he participated in the Healing Streams Live Healing Services with Pastor Chris. At the Healing Services, the Man of God dispensed divine life, health and healing to all in the name of the Lord Jesus. You are free now. You're free. You're free. You're free. Your heart, your stomach, your lungs. You are free in the name of Jesus Christ. Vikel received total liberation, healing and restoration at this epochal event. Listen as he recounts his extraordinary experience. In 2021, um, I, I didn't have any symptoms of a heart condition or a cancer or anything. It was just all of a sudden. So on the 9th of December 2021, I had two cardiac arrests. That means my heart had stopped completely twice. They had to revive my heart. Uh, but they said, the doctor said, because there was bleeding in my stomach, that is why my blood pressure went low. It was 40 by 80, the blood pressure which is, you know, near death blood pressure. So my blood pressure went that low and then the result was these two cardiac arrests. And after that, on the same day itself, I went into coma for eight weeks. When I went into coma, they said like, the doctors told me that I had a bleed in my brain it is called hemorrhage so because of the bleeding in the brain I cannot think properly I forget things then when they send me home I think after six months they send me home then I collapsed where I was I used to live because I used to I had to walk down the stairs and so I had three four falls in the in my bedroom on the staircase and in the bathroom in the toilet as well i was completely bedridden i was i could not eat properly i had modified food and drinks given to me whatever riches i had whatever mm, property i had it has it has all gone one by one yeah. And I, I became like homeless person. My nephew, Pastor Ashish Kaloke from Pune, he invited me to attend the healing stream. And he said, Pastor Chris is a man of God and he will pray for you. I said, okay, I will, I will watch this. I will attend this. But then Pastor Chris prayed for me. And as soon as, even before he said Amen, I could feel that my heart is healing and it has been healing. Tell me, have you heard anybody having three heart attacks, uh, being in coma for two months, who was bedridden? Have you ever heard 
anybody say that you know i'm walking because of jesus christ after three days after pastor uh, chris prayed for me i started eating my normal food i started walking i started going up and down the stairs and i i just became normal because of the prayers of the healing streams and the healing school i have had no other cardiac arrest or no you know bleeding in my stomach or anywhere else i know that i am completely healed so today i can talk which is i've got my speech back i can hear i can walk i, I can cook food i can do my bit of gardening in my house in my, in my you know my front uh, veranda in my kitchen I, i'm i'm doing my bit yeah when the nurses and the physios and the doctors they came outside and when they saw me they couldn't believe their eyes because i had a big long beard yeah in when i was in the icu and then the nurses started hugging me and kissing me and they were saying oh you are standing you know it is amazing and then somebody else said oh he is not only standing he has come all the way walking from the first floor and then uh, i will not forget one nurse saying to me that you know vivek i am an atheist that means i don't believe in god but today you have shown me that there is a living god who controls our life so after i heard that she, i said to her i am a child of god and this is my first testimony and i am going to give thousands of testimonies all over the world wherever they want to listen to my testimony i will give a testimony i would in lastly i would just say one thing to the man of god that pastor chris thank you very much for healing me praying for my healing and for saving my soul for the heavenly kingdom we trust that you have been blessed by today's broadcast If you are not yet born again, we invite you to make Jesus the Lord of your life by saying this prayer. Mean it with all your heart and God will hear you. Oh Lord God, I believe with all my heart in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe God raised him from the dead and he is alive today. I confess with my mouth, Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. from this day and by my faith in his name the name of Jesus i receive remission of sins for my soul i receive eternal life into my heart thank you lord for saving my soul thank you for giving me a new life i am born again i am a child of god now Thank you, Lord. Amen. If you have just said this prayer, congratulations. You are now a child of God. We would like you to send us an email at feedback at enterthehealingschool.org and we will send you a copy of Now That You Were Born Again, a book by Pastor Chris as you begin your journey in Christ. To receive more information on how you can grow as a Christian, please call us now or visit our website. God bless you.
sweet <laughs> when you come together like this so much happens that you can't even quantify you know the Bible says we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ automatically cleanses us from all righteousness praise God fellowship with one another results in the cleansing do you know we all came from different, our different worlds, our homes, you know? Maybe before you came, you had different experiences. I mean, probably you had different information from people that may have stirred up different emotions within you. In other words, we came with a certain state of heart. Maybe a joyful state, maybe, a, maybe indifferent, maybe you have been pressured so much before you even came to church you know or you've been hurt or you had a negative news or something good had happened but in the house of God we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all unrighteousness it means that every dirt will be washed off while you're fellowshipping the things that have troubled you will be taken off your shoulder praise God glory to God so fellowship is sweet, praise God. Hallelujah. No wonder he says to us in Hebrews chapter 10, from verse 24 into 25, it says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. I think it's on the screen. Yeah, let's read. Say, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Praise God. So he says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves. See, you can't, you can't <laughs> miss that one from that scripture. It's so clear, right? And he says, exhorting one another, just like I'm I mean, we've been exhorted already from the rhapsody and, you know, the various testimonies. But exhorting one another in the place of gathering like this, you see. And he said we should do it much more as the day of the Lord approaches. Praise God. Uh, let me show you Psalm uh, 133. Just read from verse 1. That scripture just came to my spirit now. It says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Say, how good and how pleasant it is. Brethren, that is brothers and sisters in the Lord. So we should dwell together in unity. And if you read further, it began to describe what takes place. Let's read the next verse, verse 2. It is like, notice, it is like. The, you say, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. Then you say, it is like the precious ointment upon the herd that ran down from the bed. The bed is here. <laughs> Even Aaron's bed is like, notice, is a description right? It says that went down to the skirts of his garment. You know, in those days, the priest wear the skirt, right? So it's, you see, when brethren dwell together like this, it's like the ointment, the anointing pouring from Aaron's bed to his skirt. It's pouring from the top to the bottom, right? Now, read on. It says, 
as the dew of Hermon. This is, it is like as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Praise God. So when brethren dwell together, God commands his blessings and it flows from the top. Glory to God. Oh, say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed to be in church. Hallelujah. Praise God. You are blessed indeed. You know, insight is very important. So a man of God brought this message that we're in a season in the spirit where God wants his children to walk in insight. See, what is insight? Now, first of all, is the Holy Spirit's desire that we walk in insight. Insight gives you a headship. If you have insight, you'll be the leader. People will follow those that have insight. Praise God. So, God wants you to play a lead role and he wants to give you an extraordinary perception. Praise God. So, what is insight? A man of God defined insight for us. He said... Insight means clear, deep, usually sudden understanding, perception, and penetration of a situation, subject, or mystery. Insight means clear, deep, and usually sudden understanding. It just comes like spontaneous understanding, something that you didn't have to think too much about, but you just get some insight, some understanding about it. Praise God. You just connect the dots in the twinkle of an eye. That's insight. It's revelation knowledge. So it says insight means clear, deep, usually sudden understanding, perception, and penetration of a situation, subject, or mystery. Let me give you an example. In Luke chapter 24, verse 45, um, Jesus met these disciples after his resurrection and they were confused about what had happened to the Lord. And in this scripture, it says, let's read 44. Let me just, into 45. You have 40. It says, and he said unto them, these are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you. Now, this is Jesus telling them to remind them, I spoke, I told you about these things that should happen. But these guys were still confused. Then he says that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and the Psalms consigning me. Right? Then the next verse, then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Praise God. So Jesus granted them insight. It was sudden because they had the same information. They didn't understand it. But when Jesus blew on them, it just opened their understanding. Glory to God. Understanding is important. Insight is important. Some of the things that you are actually... Um, concerned about, you're anxious about, you don't really, you're, you feel it's working for your disadvantage. Did you know if you have insight, it could change your emotions and your attitude towards that thing? That means the matter is not changing, but you gain insight into it. It's like when they were crucifying Jesus. He knew what it meant. He knew that it was him fulfilling his calling, what he came to do. He knew that he wasn't being defeated even though he was being killed. Praise God. It was, he says, if they had known, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. Hallelujah. Because through that vicarious death, he saved the whole world. He walked in greater insight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 from the Amplified Classic, our man of God was showing us that 
This is a prayer of the Spirit for God's people. He says, For I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation of insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of him. Hallelujah. So it's a prayer. Paul was praying for Christians that they may have insight into mysteries and secrets. There are mysteries and secrets. Yes, even the Bible talks about them. But these, these are mysterious to those that are outside God's domain, God's family. But for us, it shouldn't be mysteries to you. God wants to show you. But you have to position yourself. Praise God. Psalm 25 verse 14. You have to position yourself. Because for you to gain insight, your spirit must be uh, conditioned in a way that it should. Praise God. In the King James Version, it says, The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. Praise God. Then you can read from the Amplified as well. You want to know the things others don't know? You have to have the fear of God. Hallelujah. It says the secret of the wise counsel of the Lord is for those who fear him. He will let them know his covenant and reveal to them through his word its deep inner meaning. Praise God. Penetration. Insight means deeper meaning. Gaining deeper meaning. Praise God. So, you walk in inside. Glory to God. What about, I mean, what are the matters? First of all, insight into the word of God. You see, the word of God is um, a manual for life. And if you don't know how to use a manual you not get the best of whatever gadgets the manual is supposed to help you to understand. Praise God. So, insight into the word of God. And it's the Holy Spirit that reveals this insight to us. Glory to God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. The Holy Spirit helps us to understand the things. He says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Hallelujah. He says, we might know. This is revelation knowledge comes by the Holy Ghost. As a Christian, You've got to learn to walk by the Holy Ghost. Learn to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. That is how you receive insight. When you are able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit in your heart. It, you see, some people don't know when God is talking. I've given you examples before. God's voice is his word. Because his language is his word. If you're going to speak to me, you're going to speak in English. That means you're not going to communicate to me in uh, French because you and I, the only common language is English. Think of God and us. The only common language is his word. So if he's going to tell you, give you direction, it's going to be by the word. Hallelujah. Say, oh, what about if the matter is not anywhere in the Bible? You see, I always say something. There is a, um, there is a philosophy of the word. There is a principle of the word. Oh, there is a mindset of the just. Luke chapter 1 verse 17. If you understand the scriptures... The mindset of the word would have been in your heart. 
So when you say, oh, probably the matter that I'm trying to get insight into is, in, in, just think about it. You want to leave your house. You say, oh, I've got several outfits. Which one should I wear? Lord, give me insight. <laughs> you say, which scripture <laughs> can he use to tell me? You see. So you're not going to find one particular scripture that says, oh, wear the red one or wear the blue one. But I'm saying there is a, there is a mindset that you should have cultivated that will guide you on what you should do. Praise God. Let me read this. It says, and he shall go before him. Now I was talking about um, John the Baptist. He said, he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, that's Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. He was talking about John the Baptist's mission, right? And he says, he shall go before the Lord. And then he says, he shall make ready the people and turn the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. The wisdom of the just is phronesis. That is practical wisdom. There are different kinds of wisdom, but this is practical wisdom. Wisdom that moves the one that, know, that has that wisdom. Praise God. Because you can have wisdom and don't use it. I say, don't you know medical doctors that smoke? Don't they know what secret does to the heart? But they still smoke. So they have the knowledge, they have the wisdom, but it's not phronesis. Because that wisdom does not move them did not change their lifestyle, praise God. Or, you know, medical people that maybe drink alcohol, you know, get drunk. They're not saying it doesn't have side effect. They, they are not arguing against it, but they're just not working in phronesis, praise God. So you can know the word of God, but if it's not phronesis, it won't change your life, praise God. So God wants you to have insight, practical wisdom, praise God. Practical wisdom. And I said it comes by listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. So I say, oh, pastor, you didn't finish the illustration about the, <laughs> if it's not contained in any scripture. You see, there are so many ways that God deals with us. God knows you more than you know yourself. You see, the first thing that he would check is purpose and who gets the glory if you're going to wear a red shirt who gets the glory if you're going to wear a black one who gets the glory praise God you see and there he will guide you on what you will put on that will result to his glory Probably you're going to meet certain people. Probably you're going to function. Maybe you were coming to church. And he's telling you, this one will make greater impact today. Praise God. You see? And because you are aligned to his, his kingdom, his thoughts have filled your heart. You know, this one is for today. Praise God. Because God gets the glory. Hallelujah. And it happens like that in so many other things. But the most common one is where he reminds you of the scriptures that you already know. Praise God. And then you can walk in the wisdom of the word. Glory to God. All right. So insight. I already defined insight. Glory to God. You see, you can also have insight into times and seasons. You know, we are, our lives are a journey. And we're not all at the same stage of that journey. Praise God. So there's a time to, like Paul would say, I, I discipline myself. I know when to uh, be abased. I know when to hold back. Praise God. Sometimes you're in a phase where you just have to go through it. Because of what that thing will do in your character. Praise God. In other words, it may not be pleasant, but God may allow you to go through it. Hallelujah. And in Colossians chapter 1, 
verse 9, he talked about you having spiritual understanding. I remember when I first came into this country and I came on a scholarship, on a partial scholarship, and I was praying that everything will work out fine, no challenges. I will have my fees completely paid. But do you know what? It wasn't happening as I thought. Then, to even make it more interesting, I had even pioneered a fellowship. I mean, every week I would gather the students, I would be preaching to them, but my fees was not paid. Some of them, their parents are very wealthy. They are even telling us how they got extra monies. But me, I'm just thinking. What's I'm getting email reminders from the uni about my, my fees. But I thought, but God, I'm, I'm doing your work. I'm, you know, preaching the gospel. I'm pushing this thing. He got to the point that I had finished my, my modules. Time for graduation. They told me I shouldn't come. Because I'm still owing. And I was still holding fellowship. But what could keep a man to continue in the work of the Lord at such time? It has to be by spiritual understanding. Glory to God. Let me show you the scripture. It says, for this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. And to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. To be filled with spiritual understanding is very important. To be filled with the knowledge of God's will is very important. Because for me at the time, I thought I was doing everything that God would want me to do as a student. But my own challenges were just compiling, praise God. But I knew I was on track because God's word never failed, glory to God. So guess what? I continued, and then the graduation came, but you know, a few days before the graduation, I went to the uni, I said, you know what, I don't have the money to pay. And my graduation, I've been asked not to come. Then the lady said, oh, okay, that's it. What you can do, you can see if you can apply for any funds, any grants, any help. I just filled the form. And I left. And the next day or so, I got an email that my fees was finally cleared by the uni. It was a grant, nearly 2,000 pounds. And then they said, you, need to, you can now come for your graduation. However, you don't, we don't have your name because we've already printed everything, the program. So you, you won't have your name on the, on the program, but still you will have your certificate. It was that tight. They had gone, they had planned the program. But this time, they paid my fees. Glory to God. So God was testing me. He was pruning me. He was, you know, and after that, my faith rose. Hallelujah. I was testifying everywhere. My fees have been paid. Glory to God. It wasn't a loan. It was a grant. Hallelujah. But it took spiritual understanding to know that this situation is not um, to destroy me. Glory to God. You may be going through something right now. If you have insight into the timings of God, if you know that God, all things are working together for your good, if that knowledge is strong in your spirit, you will continue your good works. Hallelujah. You will praise God in the midst of the situation. What happened to Joseph? He had a dream. He told his brothers the dream. This is someone that had a relationship with God. And he knew that dream was from God. But guess what? The moment he's, <laughs> he testified, <laughs> when he shared his testimony, voila, problem started. Glory to God. His brothers hated him. He was sold into slavery. And good enough, Potiphar thought he was a very excellent guy. He put him in charge. But then, extra trouble came. <laughs> Praise God. Temptation. You know, he's the, he's the first person that taught us how to deal with such temptations. 
Because in the New Testament, he said, flee. But he did it first. He had, he had the wisdom. Praise God. But that wisdom was because of his relationship with God. He said, I'm not going to let my God down. Praise God. And, but it was trouble, trouble. He, then he was thrown into prison because they lied against him. What are you going through? Did you know you need insight? Did Joseph get there? He got there because he continued to use the gifts that God gave him. In the prison, he was still helping people. Interpreting their dreams. Glory to God. He was not, um, he did not give up on God. Insight is very important. Glory to God. The Lord is increasing your perception. Glory to God. Your discernment. No, you see, they say um, all that glitters is not gold. But all gold do not glitter. So with insight, you don't reject opportunities for your promotion. And those opportunities, they will come as responsibilities. They will come as burdens. But to recognize the value in that person that you think nothing good can come out, it takes insight. That's why leaders must have insight. Glory to God. Who would have thought this me will be a zonal secretary from the first day I joined the ministry? Who would have thought so? <laughs> if I tell you my history, you, you say, ah, pastor, it looked impossible. Glory to God. But the leader, my first cell leader, had insight. Praise God. So he continued to prune me, encourage me, support me, even though it didn't look like I, I could be any, any great pastor like you can think of. It takes insight to build others. Glory to God. Who are you building today? You need insight. To carry out that work effectively. They may even shout on you. They may even reject you. But insight will help you. to look at, look at our Lord Jesus with his disciples. I mean when Peter betrayed him. In fact Jesus had a full knowledge of it. I mean Peter denied him rather. Jesus told him you deny me. He said it's not going to happen. But the point here is. These disciples having worked with Jesus and everything, they, as it were, did not stand up when Jesus was being crucified. They ran away, praise God. But did Jesus give up on them? No. He supplied them the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of understanding. And once they received the Holy Spirit, they were changed for life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you need to walk in the spirit. Hallelujah. Walk in the fear of the Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, I talked about times. The children of Issachar understood the times. I said there are times and seasons. You may be going through something. It's just, it's just, the, it's just the time. But it's only for a while. Praise God. The Lord will settle you. Hallelujah. He will say to you, 1 Chronicles 12, verse 32. Um, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. It says, and the children of Issachar, this way, um, the men that came to David to help him. But they were different folds, like different groups came to David to support him when Saul was after his life. But these guys were described this way, these particular men. He says, and the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were 200. And all their brethren were at their commandment. That's leadership, praise God. 
Because they had understanding of the times. They knew what Israel ought to do. They were, they were the leaders over their, their brethren. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'll round up with this scripture. Please rise up on your feet. You see, insight will take you through the phase that you are going through right now. Insight will help you to, to bear, to bear, hallelujah, to endure, glory to God, to endure. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. And you're going to pray. I said, the Lord will settle you. The Lord will settle you. He says, but the God of all grace, who had called us into his eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after that you have suffered a while. It's only a while. He said, make you perfect, establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. Glory to God. Now begin to pray that the God of all grace has come into your situation. The God of all grace has come to strengthen you. You are perfected in all things. It doesn't matter what has happened. Insight is coming to your heart. That is working together for your good. Hallelujah. You cannot be defeated. Glory to God. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Wasn't that just lovely? Wasn't that just wonderful? Receiving such words, you know, such nourishment for the spirit. Oh, glory to God. Oh, thank you, Father Lord. You know, I hope you, I bet you're very glad that you joined in today. And I, I bet you're very glad that you invited all those people that you invited to join in, you know, because only here you can receive words like that. Only here you can be elevated in such a manner and i do hope you go back again to listen to these words you know they're here for you you know for you to receive you know for you to 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 come and watch time and time again so don't you know don't slack off come back and watch again there's further there is there are older services there are older messages well the message of god can never the word of god can never be old but our previous messages are still here so take some time throughout your week to listen and you know and go over again we have our, our various group pastors you know they, 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 they every single week we have a new group pastor uh, bringing the word to you so don't be shy you know subscribe and listen and receive praise the lord that's why this platform is here for is for your benefit praise the lord but without further ado as we have come to the house of the lord we must come with our offerings you know so get your offerings ready and get ready to give but the uk zone a choir would take us on a special offering song
glory, glory. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I hope you have given. If not, you know, the, the, the details are still on the screen. You know, take your time to give. And as you're giving, give up a joyful heart. As you're given, be exalted and be happy. Because what you have done is an investment in the spirit. You know, praise the Lord. As you have given, you will have more than you can ever imagine. Praise the Lord. But Father Lord, we thank you for these your children that are given. They're given with a joyful heart. They're joyful givers. You know, they're a partaker of the gospel. They understand the works that we're doing. They understand the importance of their giving, of their types, of their offerings unto you, Lord. For there is no greater honor, there is no greater joy but to give unto you. But as, you, as they have given, Father Lord, more shall be multiplied unto them. Oh, and the devourer is rebuked against them in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father Lord, we thank you for give even the seed that you have given to them for them to be able to sow. Because we know all comes from you. And as we give, we are giving with a joyful heart. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But now, here is my favorite part of the service. Yes, and I am so honored. I am so, so, so very honored to, you know, call out, call upon you, you know, because this is my favorite part of the segment, calling on you the first time. It's you, yes, you that is sitting at home. This is your first time joining our service online. Wherever you are, I do welcome you. On behalf of our man of God, Pastor Chris Oyakilome, and our highly esteemed zonal secretary, Pastor Wilson Grace, we welcome you to BLWA Zone A. Now, there will be some details showing below, you know, for how you can get in contact with us via our email, via our social media platform. You know, even here, leave a comment below. We see every comment. So leave a comment below and we'll get in contact with you or just email us or call us whatsoever you're comfortable with. Even on our BLWKs on our Instagram and social media pages, you can message us and there will always be someone there to get back to you. And we can allocate you to the nearest Christ Embassy Church to you or a BLW Campus Ministry Church Fellowship, wherever you are. We are everywhere. We are here to bring the word of God. So wherever you are, welcome to the family. Welcome to the home, to, to, to the family of Christ. Glory to God. But without further ado, I cannot say goodbye just yet. Anyway, I'm not going to say goodbye just yet. We don't say goodbye. I say see you later. But before we get to that part, I would like to take the announcement. You know, the announcement will be showing on the screen. I know it's a beautiful time of the year. You know, we're nearing the end of the uh, not only the ministry year but the year in general you know we're about to close off and round up and start 2023 praise the lord so without further ado take a look at the announcements to God and I hope you took down those notes you know you took down those dates and those times and those programs so that you will be a participator you'll be there and participate in life you know even if you're not live in the flesh but live online or wherever you are you are participating and you're not missing out on anything that is happening but without further ado it's time to say not goodbye but see you next time well if Christ tarries I will see you in heaven if not I'll see you next time but before we leave Let's take our benedictions. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship with the Holy Spirit is with us now and forevermore. And surely, God's goodness, mercy, and favor follow us all the days of our life as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Glory to God. I say, see you later.